One book I've been reading over the last couple months is this book called The RRSP Secret by Greg Habstrit. And really what it talks about is using RRSP's registered savings plan in Canada to actually fund your real estate deals. And a lot of investors aren't aware when they're out there and they're looking at raising money, they're looking at using private lenders, maybe hard money lenders, maybe they're looking at using people's equity in their homes, HELOCs or undervalued investments. A lot of people don't realize that in Canada, you can actually use a trust company that acts as an intermediary where you can borrow somebody's RRSP. Let's say if their money's at Royal Bank or TD Bank or it's sitting at another financial institution, you know, and it's getting like two, three percent per annum and it's just getting a low rate of return and the RRSP owner or registered saving plan owner isn't happy. Well, guess what? You can actually go and have that person move their money over from their current financial institution over to your trust company like Olympia Trust or B2B Trust, one of these trust companies, and they can fund your deals 100% loan to value if you set it up that way. Then the beauty is where if they were getting a one or 2% return and your business, one of the ways that you fund your deals is by paying somebody a 10 or 12% return per annum consistently. Well, guess what? Now you can actually use these funds to fund your deals, but also the RRSP holds Older, they can get a better consistent return and also they can actually get more security than their previous investment can give them whether it was a, in a mutual fund or it was in a stock that their RRSPs were held in so this book goes deeper into it and I really suggest you guys get a hold of it and just over the last two months we actually funded one of our deals so we bought a property where we knew a mortgage broker who had access to clients that had RRSP. So they were actually able to put this deal together with our lawyer and with the RRSP holder and they funded our deal from start to finish. And it was amazing to see that And the company that we used was Olympia Trust. They actually acted as the, the middle person. And so really, I wanna give you guys some steps that you can take, right? The first thing you wanna know is if you are gonna be borrowing money from somebody's registered savings plan, it, again, it could be an RRSP, an RESP, or a RIF, a registered retirement income fund. You can use anything that's registered to fund deals. So what you want to do is you wanna get that RRSP holder, that registered savings plan holder, holder to open up a self-directed account at a trust company. That's step number one. Now, once that is done, is the trust company is gonna request to move that money from their current financial institution. Let's say it's at TD Asset Management or RBC or any one of these financial companies where they're gonna move that money over to the trust company. And now that's called a transfer in kind. There is no taxes. You're not actually pulling out the money. Now, if you were to pull out that money and then give it to you, then you're gonna be paying a withholding tax. And again, that's not what you wanna do. You wanna do a transfer in kind. Now, once that is done, the lawyer and the trust company is basically going to register a mortgage on your property where the RRSP holder, they can actually fund that deal. Now, when you're paying those interest payments, whether it's a 10%, 8%, 12%, whatever you negotiate the terms with them, well, that money, they're not gonna, that investor's not gonna be collecting in their pocket. That money's actually gonna go back into their RRSP, that interest payment, just like it would if it was out in the market, right? Just like if they were making their money at any other financial institution, they can't actually spend that money. It's gonna grow in their tax deferred. Heard. And that's the beauty of it. The other thing you want to know is these investment loans, they need to be arm's length. And what I mean by that is people need to, they can't be related to you. They can't be your cousin or your mom or aunt. They actually have to be arm's length away, meaning they're not related to you. So for you guys, I would really suggest is start making a list of people that, again, they're not related to you, that you can approach them and even talk to them about, hey, do you have RRSPs? Uh, do you have registered funds? And for a lot of people, a lot of people in Canada, they have RRSPs, right? That's one of the main investment vehicles today that Canadians are using to fund their deals. So that's something that I would suggest you doing and actually going out there, making a plan, and then obviously approaching these people about investing in your business. So again, guys, pick up a copy of this book, start implementing this strategy. And again, if you only do this one strategy and you're, you, you make a decision where you're gonna use RRSPs only to fund your deals, well, guess what? You're not gonna run out of money because I can tell you there are so many Canadians that I have noticed over the last few months just talking to that have these investments 
that are not doing well. And so if you can make a plan, you can make a proposal and approach them. And obviously you have good deals to get funded that are bought below market value. You're not going to have a challenge or running out of money anymore.